We have it. If any man think himself to be a prophet or what? Spiritual. Let him acknowledge, which acknowledge means to what? Recognize. Recognize, to accept this truth. Acknowledge that the things that I, Paul, write unto you are the what? Commandments of the Lord. So if the prophets are prophesying today and they have no clue about the commandments of the Lord concerning the gospel of Christ from Paul, how you're not a prophet today. Or spiritual. Or spiritual. Right? <laughs> not only that, this disqualifies them because it said you think yourself to be one. Yeah. Not if God said you one. Yeah. Yeah. You think yourself to be a yeah. prophet. Yeah. So, self-proclaim. Yeah, and then, yeah, and, and, and a lot of times, Amen. verse 38 is what I use for people that just won't, you know, they just stuck in their ways, and, and I give them this scripture, not as a means to, you know, disgruntle them even more than what they already are, but just a means to say, you know, I'm done, I've done with my job, If but if any man be what? Ignorant. Let him be ignorant. Because if you think yourself to be something that you're not, Romans 12, 3 talks about that, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you think yourself to be something that you're not, not accepting as truth, the words from Paul, mm -hmm. then if it, but if you want to be ignorant, you got to let people be ignorant, right? So understand that the word of God is already fulfilled. <coughs> Paul says, Colossians 1, 25, he came to fulfill the word of God, and, it, and the word of God has been fulfilled for this purpose. Go to 2 uh, uh, Timothy 3. And before you get to 2 Timothy, since, since Thessalonians is there first, go to 2 Thessalonians real quick, chapter 2. Uh, 1 Thessalonians, chapter 2. This is another thing about prophecy. 1 uh, Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 13. For this cause, also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye receive the... Word of God. Which ye heard of us. So now, they heard and received the what? Word, Word of God. God. Okay? Now, Paul was thanking God because when they did this, it says he received it not as the word of who? Amen. But as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that what? Believe. So when I prophesy today, it's to foretell what's already been written. That's why when you leave church, if you're talking about how great I was, I didn't do my job. Because you should leave church talking about the word of God, and as even though you received it from me, you received it as truth in what? The word of God. Right? So prophecy today is not foretelling anything because everything has already been written. But prophecy today is foretelling what's already been written down. And what we're foretelling is not about things of the kingdom, not about things uh, about the God's wrath and anything out here, right? What we're foretelling is the mystery that God gave, God, God gave to us in this dispensation, right? That's what we're foretelling today. Now, uh, go to Second uh, Timothy chapter 3. Now, Pastor, while you're going there, uh, am I understanding you to say that when you're <clears throat> foretelling the... A message of grace, then that makes you a prophet. Fourth telling. All of us are, uh, uh, when you speak to people about the message of grace, you are essentially prophesying because you're forth telling what's already been told. Right? That, that, but that does not make you a self proclaimed prophet. You see that? I ain't want to say nothing yet because I know he's going to come with it next about the offices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, we'll get there. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll do that next. But, but understand. Everybody is a spokesman for God, right? That's why, because our job as ambassadors of Christ is to right. preach the ministry of reconciliation. Right. So we're speaking on behalf of God because not that God is putting the words in our mouth like he revealed back here, but we do have the words written. So we're speaking on behalf of Christ to a lost and dying world that God has reconciled himself to them and there's nothing that we need to do except for accept the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. So we're following the template as, as, yeah. as, as ministers or as uh, people that talk about it. We're following the rules before a fourth set yeah. to show yeah. people. So this is like we're not just describing ourselves as a self-proclaimed prophet. Uh -huh. but we're following the template that's in the Word. And speaking of that, go, to first, go to first Timothy. Uh, <clears throat> Huh? 115. 115. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Second Timothy, uh, 1 Timothy 115. We'll get to 2 Timothy in a minute. 
Because it speaks about what you're talking about. And let's read verse 16. How be it for this cause I obtained mercy that in me what? First. First. Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a what? Pattern. Pattern. So this is what you're talking about. To them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. So when Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14, 37, if any man consider himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write are the commandments of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know what Paul is saying, then you're not speaking the words of God today. You see that? Although you're speaking Bible, but you're not speaking the word of God for today. So if anybody say, oh, God gave me a fresh, a fresh word, mm -hmm. an anointing word for today. If you're not talking about the mystery of Christ, that's a word that you want to speak. God is not giving you no fresh word to tell you about what Gideon did back here. You see that? And mo that's what most people do. You know? So this pattern is also the mind of Christ? It's the mind of Christ, right? That's what this pattern is. Uh -huh. in, in Timothy uh, 1.16. Uh-huh. That's the mind of Christ, because now we know the mind of Christ, right? Mm -hmm. And this, it, it, go to 2 Timothy 3, and the Bible has been fulfilled, it's been completed. You don't need a prophet today to tell you any type of future prophecy about anything, because all you need is God has already provided for you. And the purpose is for, for this purpose here, 2 Timothy 3. I thought the pattern was Paul. What's that? Yeah. The pattern, was Paul. the pattern is Paul. And Paul had the mind of Christ. And that's why he says to us, Philippians 2, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. And we can know the mind of Christ today. Uh, Paul says in the first Corinthians 2. Uh, but look at 2 Timothy 3, 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is proper for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Notice it says all what? So we have all of it, right? Why? That verse 17, that the man of God may be what? Perfect, mature, truly furnished unto all what? So if we didn't have all of the words of God, then we, this the verse wouldn't be able to say that. But because we have all the words of God, we don't need a prophet telling me anything about what God has spoken. Because whatever he's spoken is already written down for me to see. If we would, uh, 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 the confusion about prophets today, if we would spend more time in study and instruction as opposed to uh, 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 hearing a new word from the Lord, if we would spend more time studying, all this confusion could be abated. It could be taken away, right? We don't have to continue to go back and forth trying to hear a new word from the Lord. When you come here, you're hearing something new because you've never heard it before. But what am I telling you? The word of God. And you receive it as though it was the word of God. It has nothing to do with the person. That's why you see today in the body of Christ, all of these titles, there's no need for them. I'm the same as you. There's no need for any titles. I'm a person in the body of Christ doing my part in the body. When you go out, that's why it says, uh, Paul says, 2 Timothy 2 and 2, uh, teach thou uh, the things that thou hast seen and heard of me. Teach thou other faithful men also that they may be able to teach others also. When you go out and teach somebody else, what you're doing is you're speaking on behalf of God. That's why I tell you the most ignorant things to say is what? My pastor. My pastor said. Why? Because I don't want you to misquote me and then now you misquote God. Right? So that's why I give you the scriptures so you can say what God has said. Right? And that's what a prophet is today. You're foretelling what's already been told, particularly the mystery of Christ. Right? So anybody that's uh, coming up to you about the you know, I'm going to prophesy and speak over your life and all this nonsense. If they don't tell you about what God is speaking today, which is the <coughs> Romans 2, 5, amen, then you know that they're false prophets, right? Any other questions, comments? Yes. Concerning the title. Uh -huh. um, uh, this, is this considered like deacons and bishops? and Are these uh, um, ministers and, and prophets fall into that category? or? Uh, to a degree, to a degree, because today there's no more apostles and prophets. Right. Because the purpose and function of them have already been fulfilled. Right? Now, when it comes to bishops and deacons, there's still need for those. So when I was speaking about titles, I'm talking about apostles and pro uh, prophets mainly. Because those have been fulfilled. Now, there are bishops which are just overseers. Technically, I'm considered a bishop. 
Now, in the organization we come from, a bishop is somebody who has more than one church that he's over. But technically, a bishop is what I am. Technically, according to the Bible, technically speaking, I'm Bishop Hobbs. Right? But I don't even care to even tell anybody that. <laughs> right? According to the Bible, according to 1 Timothy 3, I will, I will be considered a bishop, an overseer. Right? Uh, so that's the and deacons, according to religion, it's people who count money, right? That has nothing to do with a deacon today. And they get that from Acts chapter 6, which the term is not even used because they say Philip is the first deacon. Because when they said that we have matters, uh, uh, Peter said that, that we, we don't have time to wait on tables and do that, so they assume that to be a deacon. That's, that, that has nothing to do with the job or the purpose of a deacon. The first time it's mentioned is Paul, 1 Timothy 3. And what happens is the deacon has the same qualifications as a bishop, right? His qualifications is just not to count money. He has the same qualifications. The only difference in a bishop and a deacon is it says the bishop can be given to no wine, but a deacon can be given to a little wine. It's the only difference. They have to know the mystery. They got to treat their wiser. They got to do all of that, right? Mm -hmm. So so that's the, the, when I speak about titles in the sense, I'm talking about apostles and prophets. And even that, I don't run around and say I'm pastor this or bishop that. I don't really care to even talk about that. But that doesn't matter. Now, if somebody asks me, then, you know, I'd say, yeah, I'm the pastor of that church. Okay, when you're talking about apostles and prophets, prophets, uh -huh. how do they relate to 2 Timothy 4 and 2? 2 Timothy 4 and 2, preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season. Yeah, so how would I be a prophet? Preaching the word and say I'm a, I'm a apostle foretelling what it says what. But but notice that, that verse at the end of that verse says with all long suffering and doctrine. doctrine you see that most of these people prophesying don't know a bit more doctrine. They don't even know this doctrine, <laughs> right? Let alone the doctrine that we're supposed to know. They don't know anything. Long suffering too. Yeah. Just saying, like yeah. you call yourself a you apostle, but you're not preaching. Word. Yeah, yeah. That's the key. Yeah, yeah. And most apostles and prophets today, they don't, they don't know the Bible. It, it's based on experiences. It's based on what God has said to me, what God has done for me, right? So what it should be, apostles should be able to just turn you to a verse and tell you a fortune right there. <laughs> yeah. Exactly yeah. Be. And we're going to get into that next about the purpose and function of an apostle. So we're going to get into that next. Anything else? All right. Father God, we thank you now for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for this time of fellowship. Father God, we thank you for uh, uh, the people that are here, even though the weather is not uh, uh, to our liking. But we thank you for the people who made it out, who thought it not a robbery, uh, to come and hear the word of God. Father God, we ask for now that you just continue to uh, build them up, bless them uh, uh, spiritually, uh, help them to uh, be edified and mature in Christ as we continue to uh, walk this walk. Father God, help us to, uh, 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 although we walk in the flesh, help us not to walk after the flesh. Uh, we thank you right now. We uh, thank you for your grace. It's sufficient in all that we do. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.